Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to generate a query showing customers who have not ordered in the last 30 days. Today's question comes from Grace in Fargo, North Dakota, one of my Platinum members. Grace wants to know if there's a way to generate a report showing customers who haven't placed an order in the last 30 days so she can follow up with them and maybe send them an advertisement. Well, of course, Grace, let me show you how. Now, this is going to be an expert level video. And what does that mean, expert level? Well, it's not quite developer, but it's a little more than beginner. So there's a few things you need to know before we start today. You don't need any programming, but you do need these other things. First, go watch my invoicing video. That's where I show you how to build the order entry system. We got customers, we got orders, we got invoices, all that good stuff. Next, go watch my video on outer joins. Okay, outer joins is where you can say, okay, show me all of the customers in the database, whether or not they have any contacts or orders or something else in a related table. This is how we can also see customers who don't have any orders. Go watch my video on calculated fields and queries. This is a big one. We're gonna need the NZ function to convert null values to something else. Zero is just the default. We're gonna to need to know how to make an aggregate query. That's where we can group stuff together by some field. We're gonna to group together a customer, group all of his orders together and show the maximum date. So we get the last date that they placed an order. And of course you need to know how to use query criteria. Now, if you haven't watched any of these videos, go watch them first, then come on back. I will wait for you, even though you're holding up the class. Go on, go watch. I'm just kidding. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch them now and then come on back when you're ready. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. And in here, I've got customers and each customer has one or more orders. So I want to find what the most recent order date is for each customer. And then I want to say, okay, I want to see which customers do not have an order date that is older than 30 days ago. And remember, the way dates work, right? Higher values are further in the future. So I'm gonna look at today's date, go minus 30 and show me everybody who's got maximum order dates less than that. Make sense? Okay. So let's go and start off with a query. So create, query design. I'm gonna bring in my customer and my order tables. Okay, now those are joined together by the customer ID. You can see right there, okay. Bring in the fields you want. You can bring in customer ID. Let's bring in first name and last name. If you want to also optionally, I've got an is active field down here. You can use that to indicate if a customer is no longer, you know, maybe they died or they moved out of the area, whatever. So you can, you could bring that in at this point if you want to track that. And also over here from the order table side, bring in the order date field. We don't need all the other stuff in here. Maybe is paid if you only want to track paid orders, if that makes a difference to you. But for class, I'll just keep it simple. Now, if you run this query, you get all of your customers that have orders and all of their order dates. You can see some customers are in here multiple times and some customers are missing completely. Notice customer three, seven, eight, nine, those are all missing. So you wanna see those people too, right? If you're gonna send out an advertisement to customers that haven't placed an order in the last 30 days, well, that also includes the customers who haven't placed any orders, right? So we wanna get those guys, get those people in this query too. And how do we do that? Well, that's where that outer join comes in. We're gonna double click on this join line and we're gonna pick the second option here. Include all records from customer T. That all, that capital all is significant, right? I want all of the customers and only those records from order T where they join. So in other words, show me all of the customers, whether they have an order or not, but if they have an order, join it up, right? That's what that does with a little arrow there. Now, when I run this, you can see I'm seeing all of the customers, including Deanna Troy, Wesley Crusher, people who haven't placed an order at all, okay? Now, I don't wanna see customers multiple times, like me, I've got two orders, okay? So that's where the aggregate comes into play. So we're gonna go back to design view, we're gonna turn on the totals, make an aggregate query out of this, and for order date, I wanna pick max, not last, max. All right, you want the highest value. In fact, I have a whole separate video on why you never wanna use first and last. You always wanna to stick to max and min, all right? Because you could put an order in the system today 
but backdate it, and that will be the last order. See what I'm saying? So stick with max if you want the highest date. Okay, now we're going to save this query, save it, control S, and we're going to make this the customer max order date queue, my customer max order date query. All right. You don't always want to try to do too much with one query. And in fact, this is a case where you have to save this. And then we're going to use this query to build another query, right? Because we need this query to generate this max of order date value. All right. Then we're going to put some criteria on this, but we can't put the criteria on just yet. All right. So we got to do some more stuff with it. All right. So shut this query down, save changes. Sure. And we're going to create another query. All right, we're going to pull that query into this one. Okay. Now, again, bring in the customer ID, the first name, the last name, whatever fields you want to see. Now, this max of order date, I'm going to use the NZ function to say, okay, if this guy is null, we're going to put some super old value in here, like January 1st, 1990 or something. All right, so I'm going to zoom in, shift F2. All right, move, slide this down so you can see the field name. All right, we're going to create a calculated column. We're going to call this last order colon. It's going to be set equal to NZ max of order date comma. Now, usually with NZ, usually you're looking up ID fields, right? So you're going to set it equal to zero if there's no ID. If you're looking up a, a customer or an order ID, or if you're looking up a string value, usually you put an empty string in here. If you're looking up first name, last name, there isn't one. But for this, we want to change it to some really old date. All right, NZ is very helpful for giving you whatever you want your default value to be if one doesn't exist. So in this particular case, I'm going to put in January 1st, 1990. So inside of pound symbols, because it's a date, 1990-1-1. Okay, now I am using the ISO date standard as everyone should. I am on a mission in life to get everyone to use this date format. Year, month, day, it's the only one that makes sense. The only one. Go watch this video if you want to learn more. Okay, so if there is no max order date, I want to set it to January 1st, 1990. Hit OK. Let's run this real quick and take a peek. All right, look at that. Look what we got. See, Deanna Troy did not have an order, so she's 1 1 Set it to a really old date, something before your company existed, right? All right, that's your ground zero date. And we can sort this now. We can sort on this field. Drop that down, ascending, right? There you go. There's all the people who've never ordered. And then you got these guys down here. All right. Now I want to count the number of days between this date and today. So using our date math, we know that a day equals one, right? Right. We don't need complicated date diff functions and all that stuff. Just simple date math. Just subtract one day from another day and you get the number of days between them, right? Go watch my date math video for some more tricks. So what I could do is in here, now you'd think I could just come over here and say, let's call this uh, num days. And let me zoom in for you, All right? Num days is going to be today's date minus last order, which is the value that I created here. You'd think that would work, but you're going to get an error. Why? Because at the point this is trying to do that calculation, last order doesn't technically exist yet. I know, I know it's complicated. So you can either feed this query into a third query or you can just steal this entire calculation right there, copy that, and stick the same thing in here. I don't like duplicating it, but in, cer in certain cases like this, it's okay. All right, so take today's date, subtract that max order date, and that will give you the number of days since their last order. All right, hit OK, and now run it, and there you go. There's the number of days since that date. And now it's easy to put our criteria on and say we want this number to be greater than or equal to whatever your preference is, 30, right? So come down to criteria and say greater than or equal to 30. And now when I run it, I get all the people who have not placed an order in at least 30 days. Everybody less than 30 doesn't show up. And that is how you do it. I will save this query as my customer num days, last order queue, whatever you want to call it. I'm just saving it for the gold members. Okay. And now if you want, you can use that query to feed a form or a report, or you can print it out and, and I don't know, mail it to someone or whatever you want to do with it. If you want to learn more cool stuff, like more cool stuff, I can't say that, say that 10 times fast, more cool stuff, more cool stuff like this. I recommend my access expert 27 and 28 classes. 
It's my comprehensive guide to access functions. And 27 starts the date time function. There's two levels of that. And one of the things we do in here is a really cool aged accounts receivable report and all kinds of other date-based coolness like that with orders and things with chemical parts and molecular structures and moving things and yeah. But there you go, people. There is your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. I had fun. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.